today's live IELTS class. I hope everybody is off to a good weekend wherever you are in the world. My name is Adrian and I am streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest here in the heart of Europe. This class is IELTS questions and answers to get those high scores. Specifically, this class is for our channel members to ask questions that come up uh, during their studies. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch. And in 90 minutes, we will have a speaking part to cue card class for everyone. While we wait for some of our members to join in, uh, the lesson and these materials, they're brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Check us out there. And for the general outs, check us out at gieltshelp.com. Hi, Rajveer. Hi, Preeti. So this is a Q&A class, Rajveer and Preeti. So get your questions uh, ready. We'll wait for some more members to join in. So just uh, be a little bit patient. Wait a, a minute or so. Um, while I show our viewers our websites here, this is our academic uh, web portal, aehelp.com. Click that big red button to join the premium package or the smaller green button to try the demonstration account for free. Same idea with the general version of our web portal, except it's a green background focusing on the general exam. Of course, it has different materials for the writing and for the uh, reading sections. Those are the different parts. Um, and of course, the people who take general IELTS and academic IELTS are not the same. So people taking the academic IELTS, it's usually for school, university, college, sometimes for work. Um, and uh, those taking the general version of the exam, that's usually for immigration to get visas to move to another country and sometimes for work as well. So make sure you know which version of the exam you need to study for and choose the correct study materials. Hi, lovely Yadav, good to see you in class. Uh, Carissa, good to see you. So Carissa, Yadav, this is a question and answer class. Once every couple weeks, I host these Q&A question answer classes specifically for members. So that means you can ask any question about the IELTS or about our products uh, that you've come across or you thought about, and I'll gladly answer them as best I can. Uh, viewers, make sure to check out our apps, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help in your Google Play and Apple App Stores. Look for our logos, download the app, Link the app to your web account for an integrated learning experience. So you're logging in with the same username, password, whether it's the website or the app. If you ever have questions or any concerns, you can always send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. And you can get our exam books from Amazon. Also, just search for AE Helps Academic IELTS and GE Helps General IELTS. Again, make sure you know which version of the exam you're studying for. Uh, any of our members learning for the uh, general version of the exam? So it's nice to have these live interactive classes. Uh, Rajveer Preeti, Yadav, Carissa, anybody learning for the general version of the test as opposed to the academic? All right, and while I wait for that answer, just one more really important announcement uh, for today, and that's the schedule. Uh, as most of you know, it is a holiday season, especially uh, in many Western countries with Christmas and New Year's. So I have created the live streaming schedule uh, from today until January 3rd, and I'm going to uh, put that on the uh, channel as well, okay? So here we go. Today it's Q&A for members in this class. Then it's speaking part two for everyone. And after today, so between the 22nd and the 26th, 
there's no live classes. So I'm taking some time for family, so are my colleagues. And the next day I'm back for live streaming will be on the 27th with speaking part one. 28th, we'll have a couple of classes for members as well. 29th, some more classes. So 27, 28, 29. And then the 30th uh, to January 2nd, there's no live classes. And then back on January 3rd with speaking part one. However, students definitely check on the channel. I will be releasing a couple different uh, HD pre-recorded videos, some really nice uh, speaking interviews and such. Uh, by the way, we just released a speaking video with a Vietnamese candidate um, who scores a seven. Her name is Mai. Uh, make sure you check out that uh, speaking example interview. It's a good one. Okay. So uh, just a quick hint here. Uh, be sure to check on our channel for video uploads during the holiday season. Okay. Um, we did just upload a uh, speaking interview example uh, with a Vietnamese candidate who scores band seven. All right. Okay. So, um, Carissa, you're learning for the academic. Rajveer, I see that you're learning for the general. Okay, uh, Rajveer, definitely make sure to check us out at uh, gieltshelp.com uh, for the general. Okay, let me know if you have any questions there. All right, so uh, members, let's get into it. We have a good number of members in the class now. Roshni's joined us. Uh, Preeti uh, Amarjeet is in here. So... Um, let's start off our Q&A session. Any questions, members, that you've come across in your studies, uh, feel free to voice them. There's no such thing as a stupid question. All questions are good. Uh, you, if you think of a question for the exam that you had, paper-based, computer-based, uh, IDP versus British Council, specific question type, just ask your question because if you have the question, there's a good chance that some of your uh, fellow students and peers also have that same question or also are thinking about it. So go ahead, ask me any question that you have uh, regarding the IELTS. It could be about something in general. It could be something in specific it could be something about the listening section the speaking section what kind of clothes you should wear to the exam um, what should you eat before your exam date so all of those are valid questions being physically and mentally prepared for a, an expensive challenging exam like the IELTS is a good idea okay Okay, so Roshni says, how can a student be confident that on the test day they will get a high band like seven or eight? Okay, that's a, that's a good question, Roshni. So how can a student be confident that they will get um, a band seven to eight on the test day? All right. Good question, Roshni. So the answer is you must do at least uh, two or three timed practice exams, timed uh, full practice exams before the real deal. Now, students, this is a question and answer session, but of course you will see some nice expressions used throughout this class, like real deal. Um, so you must do at least two or three time full practice exams before the real deal. Uh, mark the listening and um, reading sections. Use the score calculator 
on the website. Okay. So um, the uh, reading and the uh, uh, listening sections, they're objective. It's either right or wrong. So uh, you can um, mark them on your own. And then you can take your score from 40, like 30 out of 40, 35 out of 40, and convert that into your actual band score. If we go to the website, students, I'm going to show you something here real quick. I have to darken the... Uh, screen so you can see this clearly just bear with me one second okay so at the bottom of the website uh, this is the general outs website of course it's with the green background uh, there's a score calculator of course it's not up in the center but you can see here uh, there are some options at the bottom like uh, score calculator blog forum lots of good information there uh, click on the score calculator and then um, when you do your practice exam, you can um, put your band score. So you see that this is the uh, listening here out of 40, general reading out of 40. And um, notice how here it says general reading out of 40. Uh, so Rajveer, for you, make sure you're using this calculator because the academic and the general uh, band score calculators are not the same for the reading section. Did you catch that, Rajveer? It's very important. And for academic students like Carissa, be, make sure that you're using the academic score calculator. Okay, the score calculators are different. So here you can say, okay, Rajveer got 36 out of 40. So you got 36, so you know you got 7.5, yay. Uh, you can probably get 7.5 in the real exam, okay? All right, I see the other questions. Preeti, just hang on. I'll get to those as well, okay? So make sure you're using the correct sc uh, score calculator. So we're still on um, Rajveer's question here of how do I know I can get seven to eight on test day, okay? So do at least two or three time full practice exams. Make sure it's not just luck, but you're actually that level. Uh, mark the listening and reading sections. Use the score calculator on the website. And if you remember, uh, send me your uh, recording for the speaking and your uh, task one and two essay, and I can give you a score estimate. Okay. So couple of really important points, members, students, when you're checking your band level, if you don't have like an IELTS class that you go to where somebody can tell you exactly your level, we can help you. So use the practice exams in your My Student account. Do one of them without any review. So make sure it's a fresh new exam. Okay. Um, timed okay so that's a couple important points here so make sure the exams and questions are new you never saw them before because of course then you will do better and another important point make sure the practice test that you are doing is the same difficulty as the official IELTS. Uh, we work very hard to make sure that our exams are the same difficulty as the real exam, okay? Uh, the other exams are Cambridge Pass Papers. Now, the difficulty of the exam does change over the years. So IELTS book number one is quite old now, and the exam has changed a bit since then. So you should be looking at books uh, number 10 to, I believe, 14 is the latest. Okay, so make sure that you're using one of these practice exams to uh, estimate your score. There are some um, practice exams from some companies 
uh, like barons or um, longmen's, I think. Uh, and those are easier than the real exam. So be really careful because if you get a band 7.5 on barons practice exams, you're probably only going to get like a band six on the official exam. So be really careful uh, about which materials you're using. Okay. There are definitely some that are easier than the real test. I've never seen ones that are more difficult, but I've definitely seen easier exams. Also exams that are more colorful or have questions that don't look like the real test. So careful. Okay. Yeah, Rajveer, I believe there is Cambridge past Alts papers book number 14. I think that just came out um, this year. Yeah, Preeti says, I've seen it. It's released. Okay. So, uh, and the important point here is make sure you do uh, the uh, listening, reading, and writing section in the three hours. Then take a break, a few hours, and do the speaking, okay? So uh, make sure to do the listening, and no cheating, so don't spend an extra 10 minutes on task two, because that doesn't happen in the real exam. They will take away your paper, okay? So make sure to do the listening, reading, uh, writing, sections in the given time then take a break even for a day and do the speaking okay so is that clear um students for rajveer's question of how can i make sure that i can get a band seven to eight in the official exam and it's a very smart maneuver Rajveer, because then you're not wasting money uh, hoping to get a band seven. Many students sit the uh, official exam hoping to get a band seven, and definitely there's no point to do that. Okay, it's absolutely no point. You cannot bet on luck to get a band seven. Language and language exams don't work that way. Okay, uh, you might as well go play the lottery. So don't don't do that. All right, make sure that you can reach the band level you need before you spend $300 US, which I know in some parts of the world is a lot of money. I mean, in the US, it's a lot of money. So, um, so make sure you don't do that, okay? Or Roshni's question. Sorry, Rajveer, Roshni's question. Thanks for the correction. Okay, um, so let's get back to a couple of the other questions. Uh, um, yes, there's Rajveer's question. There, Roshni, sorry, Rajveer, you're close. So, Roshni, thanks for that question. Um, Rajveer's question is, in writing task two, how do I choose a strong body paragraph points from the opinions collected during planning? That's a really good question. Yeah, because content is important, especially if you're going for those high band scores. So, uh, Rajveer's question is, how do I identify uh, strong points for my uh, body paragraphs in task two writing? Now, I've talked about this before. Uh, so before I give the answer, let's see, do any of our members, especially members that have been uh, with us for a few months, um, let's see if any of you remember some of the advice I've given you in lessons in the past. So how can I think of some strong points for body paragraphs to develop from the ideas in the thesis? So I have my thesis points, right? Like um, in this week's classes, we talked about borrowing money and we said, okay, um, it's a faster way to start a business, buy a house. Uh, also, it's a good way to um, invest money and make money to get a loan and build a business. So what can I do to come up with strong ideas and points for my body paragraphs. What have I given you as advice in the past? Let's see if anybody remembers. And this is Rajveer's question. 
from a little bit earlier. What can you do? And, and it's a very good question, Rajveer, because you can save a lot of time and really increase your task to band score when you have not just good English, but strong writing. Okay. So, and there's definitely some very good techniques for this. Okay, so Roshni says, um, don't forget to go through the steps of critical thinking. Yeah, so sure. Okay. Yep, that's one of the basics for sure. So ask what, why, how. So what do you mean you can buy a house faster? Why can you buy the, fa uh, the house faster? How can you buy the house faster? Specifically answer those questions, of course. What else? There are di definitely different steps. Sometimes one step doesn't seem to work so well. And so we want to use multiple strategies to really go, aha, Eureka, right? Everybody knows that expression, Eureka. Okay, it's when a light bulb goes off, bing, right? So how do you get to this point? I think that's what Rajveer, am I correct, Rajveer? That's what you're trying to get to is how do I get to this situation where I go, Eureka, light bulb, it's the best idea. So how do I get to that point, right? Okay, um, Preeti says, uh, make several different points, then choose the best option. Yeah, so, th so think outside the box. That's a good one uh, as well, uh, Preeti. So think outside the box. Okay, think of multiple points and then um, Choose the best, sure. Okay, that's another one. Uh, Rajveer says visualize, absolutely. Okay, let's take that one step further, Rajveer, the visualize, all right? Um, remember, your top down and down up processing. Does everybody know what I mean by that? Remember your top down and your down up processing? What do I actually mean by that? So what does that mean? So use top down and down up. So top down and down up processing. Everybody knows what that means? I'll show you an example of it. And Rajveer, this can be very effective to think of good uh, ideas for your uh, body paragraphs. So um, we talked about uh, two points in the essay this week. One was faster and the other one was investment, right? So, or making money, making profit. So this is why loans are good, right? So loan, loans are good because it's an investment and it's faster, right? So that's what we talked about. So what students usually uh, do is they think from the top down. They think like this. Okay, so this is the top, this is the down. And they go, okay, uh, get money quickly. Okay. And then uh, they think, uh, okay, uh, $200,000 today, right? So they start thinking of explanations and then uh, they, Think of the example. So this is the what, the why, and this is the how. Okay. So then they think, uh, okay, um, what does that mean? It means I bought a house. Two bedroom house. Okay. So most of the time, because it's logical and it's the nature of uh, the essay, it's the structure. Um, this is how we usually approach these ideas. We, we think of the big picture and then we look for the smaller explanations and examples and details. So this is our most common approach. But what we forget is that um, we can actually 
uh, take this and we can turn it around, right? So we can take this pyramid, or in this case, it's a funnel, and we can take the funnel and we can turn that into a pyramid. So um, look at it from the, from the top direction, okay? And I'll show you what I mean. Uh, Rajveer, do I remember correctly that your example was uh, that your uncle uh, bought a grocery store with money that he borrowed, so he started a business? Or was that somebody else? I know somebody said their uncle bought bought a grocery store. Um, yeah, so Rajveer said, okay, so my memory is not that terrible. Um, so, so that's your down up. So you visualize the example, okay? And your example was uncle gets loan, buys grocery store. Okay, uh, then the explanation is need $1 million to start company. And then the, uh, the what is banks uh, provide opportunity to start businesses quickly, okay? I know my writing isn't the cleanest here, but it's just to give you the idea. So you go, okay, um, so here we go. Uh, we visualize this example. My uncle sets up shop. He opens a grocery store. What does he need to do that? He needs a million dollars. Does he have that? No, he doesn't. So he needs it to start the company. How does that happen? He goes to the bank, gets the loan. Now he's able to make money. He's able to repay that loan. And now suddenly that Eureka does go off, or it should, where um, you go, aha, light bulb, okay? Why? Um, because you realize that it's also a very good idea uh, for your second body paragraph, which is your investment, right? So uncle makes money, uh, pays loan, okay, um, gets more loan, builds more business. So from this, now suddenly thinking about it in the inverse, uh, you're able to generate many more ideas. And one more tip here, um, Rajveer. So that was a good example. Uh, does this make sense so far? So what I'm writing on the board of how to generate more efficient ideas is think about your body paragraphs, not just from the topic sentence to your example, but flip your your body in your mind, of course, after flip it back when you're writing, but in your mind, flip the, um, the logic and start with the example logic. Okay. Now here's one other very good point, um, to think about when you're doing this, the examiners are in the aisles for high marks in task two especially the academic, where they're thinking college university writing, they're looking for a high level of cohesion and coherence, okay? So a really great way to create that high level of cohesion and coherence is to connect, whenever possible, the examples between your body paragraphs, okay? So here's a very important point, okay? So the IELTS examiners are looking for very good, what's called flow and coherence, coherence means that it's clear, it makes sense for the question. Flow means that there's a logical pattern uh, a smoothness, if you will, to uh, the writing. 
and then of course cohesion and cohesion means the connectedness okay uh, a cohesive is glue another way to say glue in english is cohesive cohesive and glue okay all right something used to stick together so the exa the examiners are looking for very good cohesion in your writing task one and two of course but task two is worth more so looking for very good cohesion especially in the academic essays uh, and here's the big trick okay so one good way to create a high uh, level of cohesion and coherence is to reference the same example in both of your body paragraphs. Okay, so for example, my uncle's grocery store. Okay, um, is that clear? So if you can use the same concept, in this case for borrowing a loan to start a business or buy a house, if you can use the same concept like your uncle's grocery store to back up your point number one and your point number two, that it's a faster way to start a business or get a house, and it's a good way to gain profits quickly and early, then the examiner goes, okay, that's fantastic, that's very clear, and you've got a lot of strength in your argument because the same example can back up both of your arguments. So that's definitely uh, a good way to bump up your band score. Examiners know that, they pay attention to that, okay? All right, is that clear, members? So again, how do you, so let's get back to the original question. Rajvir said, how do I come up with powerful points for the body paragraphs? Visualize, think down up, not just top down, okay? Of course, think what, why, how, visualize again. And um, uh, think about your examples. Try to think of examples that might be able to back up your different points from your thesis argument, okay? It's a very good way to strengthen your essay. All right, um, Preeti, I saw a question that you asked me. You said, when will you give us the information for speaking partners? I have the list, Preeti, I haven't forgot. I've just been very busy, but now with the holiday season, I should have some time uh, to... Um, send out that list to members. Uh, what I will do is I will do a post, okay? Uh, so this is what I'm gonna do today, and I'm sorry I haven't done that before. It actually just dawned on me that this will be the best way. So uh, I will, I think this was Preeti that asked this. Let me just check. Yeah, so Preeti is asking, when will I find a speaking partner? So Preeti's question, uh, when will you, meaning Adrian, me, help me to find a speaking partner? Now, this is just for members, okay? Um, I don't have time to do this for everyone. So, um, I will do this today, okay? Answer, Preeti, today. Um, after this, uh, after the next class, okay? So I will uh, post the email of other uh, members looking for speaking partners on our YouTube um, bulletin board. It will be posted to members only, okay? So I'll do that today, Preeti. All right, I promise you I will do that today. All right. And Roshni is already saying, Preeti, you don't have to wait. I'm ready to go anytime you're ready. All right.
Okay, good. Yeah, ambition is important. So I'll do that today. Um, for some of our newer members, uh, you probably don't know about this, but um, I collected a list of members who are looking for speaking partners. So that's what we're talking about here. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. There's some other questions. Uh, so Amarjeet says, can you tell us some writing books which are beneficial to prepare for all the modules? Um, Amarjeet, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by writing books. So are you asking me books uh, which explain writing, like writing skills, essay writing skills? If, if that's what you mean, then you need to um, look for books that help you to improve your essay writing. Can you tell me, Amarjeet, a little bit more clearly what you mean by writing books, which are beneficial to prepare for all modules? When you're saying module, Amarjeet, that basically means like listening, reading, writing, speaking module. So I'm not sure... It's a little bit confusing, your question. Uh, Yadav, um, send me an email. So if you're also looking for a speaking partner, um, send me an email. So anyone, any member uh, looking for a speaking partner, uh, send me an email with your email. <laughs> Okay. When I say send me an email, I mean send it to adrian at aehelp.com. Okay. With your email, uh, gender and band level. Gender just because some students prefer same gender, some students uh, prefer or don't care, some people prefer the other gender. So um, just let me know. Okay. So with your gender and approximate band score. For the speaking, of course, not your overall. And I will add it to the list. Okay. And please do that today because I'm going to uh, send it out today. So, uh, Yadav, just send me um, your email, your approximate, roughly, your speaking level, and your uh, gender that you prefer to connect with. And then I'll add you to the list. I think there's about 20 people on the list so far. And then I'll put it up on the community board and everybody can just connect through that. You can chat to each other through the community board, okay? And it will only be visible to members. All right, uh, Amarjeet, uh, let me know what your question was. Meanwhile, uh, members, if you have some more questions, let me know, okay, I'm, I've got a few more minutes. Roshni is saying, for reading and writing, can you suggest uh, books other than Cambridge? Well, there's ours, there's Cambridge. Um, I'll have to think about it, Roshni. Uh, for writing, Roshni, and this is also for other students, so what books, is it, okay, we'll tackle this question. So what books should I read for improving my writing okay um, there are several really good books uh, for improving your writing what's important is that you are specific so google this key term There is actually a book called Essay Writing Basics. 
and there's another one called essay. Uh, are are uh, you familiar, students, with the Dummies and Idiot series? I know it sounds harsh, but they're actually very useful books. I use some of them, like I do stock investing, and I've read the book uh, Stock Investing for Dummies. It was one of my first <laughs> books that I read for learning on how to invest into the stock market, uh, and I found it very useful. And I have checked the uh, essay writing for dummies books, and it and they're quite good. So I can highly suggest them. Okay. It's another one that you can check out. I don't know um, uh, about uh, being a, where to buy these. Uh, Amazon for sure. So Amazon definitely has all of the dummies uh, books. And essay writing for dummies is a very good one to kind of start from the basics and build it up from there. Okay. Um, there's another one called essay writing basics. You can uh, search for that um, on uh, Amazon as well. And then, of course, you can just Google essay writing basics for college and university. And there are a lot of good books that will come up, a lot of good titles. Okay. Uh, the problem with the writing in the IELTS is a lot of students uh, try to get high band scores in the writing section of the IELTS, especially in the academic, uh, without understanding the fundamentals, the basics of essay writing. Uh, so here's an interesting question for you um, to give you an idea of what I mean. What are the four fundamental essay types? Okay, and some of our students should know this because I've told you this before. So this is just to give you an idea of how you need to understand essay writing uh, and some of the key parts of the basics in essay writing. And here's a question to kind of get you thinking on that. So what are the four fundamental essay types? Okay. Yadav, just send me an email, include that information for me, okay? And then I'll, uh, I'll add that to the list about the speaking partner. So this is my question to you. What are the four fundamental essay types? All essays that we write in school, university, in life can be categorized as mainly one of these types of essays. So Rajveer says persuasive is one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Persuasive essays are like argumentative essays, defensive essays, counter-argumentative essays. There's a lot of different types of persuasive essays, but that's one of the fundamental types, okay? And this is task two, essay in uh, the IELTS, right? Um, another one is descriptive, very good. So Preeti says descriptive, okay? And descriptive is like the father of all essay types. So uh, there's descriptive writing in all essays. There are some essays that are just specifically descriptive. So in um, your English class, when your teacher says, write an essay that describes your dream house, then that's a descriptive essay, okay? So descriptive essay, like describe your dream house, yeah. Uh, another one, Rajveer, very good, is a narrative. That's your story essay. Yeah. This is task one of the general IELTS. Okay. So um, if you're still with us, Carissa, um, when you're thinking about writing, or actually it's not Carissa, sorry, it's Rajveer that you're doing the uh, general outs. So for anybody who's doing the general outs, you should become familiar with narrative writing techniques. So when you're reading a book like Essay Writing for Dummies or Essay Writing Basics, for those students who are doing the general version of the exam, you should focus a lot on the narrative um, type essay and that description because task one, letter writing, when you tell a story of what happened to you what happened to your company or what happened on a trip. Um, that's all narrative writing. And then uh, Rajveer says expository is the fourth style. Yeah. 
Okay, and expository is the task one of the academic IELTS. Now, it's no surprise that in the academic IELTS, uh, you're expected to know how to write an expository essay and a persuasive essay because in school, in university, most essays, most of the essays you write for professors are either persuasive or expository. In general IELTS, it's no surprise that the essay types are narrative and persuasive because in our everyday life, most writing is either narrative or persuasive. And each of these, so persuasive, descriptive, narrative, expository, each of these have some very clear rules that make for good writing. So in order to really get high band scores on the IELTS exam, it's a great idea to spend at least a few hours understanding the fundamental essay types and what makes this type of writing. Okay. All right. Uh, members, I'm going to stop there for today. I did schedule one more Q&A class for this year. Uh, I believe um, it will be, let me just check. Yeah, it's on the last class, last members class of the year. So on the 29th, which will be the last members class of this year, um, we will have one more Q&A session so that everybody can really get out all of their questions before we get into 2020. Um, those were some really uh, great inquiries. I'm happy that I could help you out. Again, I will post the list of people, members looking for speaking partners. For everybody who's watching, you can become a member of the channel by clicking the join button beside the subscribe button. Uh, thank you so much, Rajveer, Preeti, um, Yadav, Amarjeet, Carissa, for being in the class today. It was fantastic to answer your questions. And uh, in uh, just a little bit over 30 minutes, I will be back with a speaking part two cue card, uh, how to come up with ideas for challenging cue cards will be the topic of the next class. Again, that'll be in about 30 minutes. Hopefully I will see you there. Make sure to check out our websites, uh, generalisleshelp.com and aehelp.com with the blue background. Click that big red button there to join us. And uh, I look uh, forward to uh, teaching you a bit of speaking. You're very, very welcome, Rajveer. Bye for now, students. Thank you, Preeti.